Good day everyone. I welcome you to the episode 2 of CHMO and 1 is simplified by Kido Academy. If you have not watched episode 1, please go and watch the episode 1, which is the history of the periodic table. It's going to guide you on how uh, the evolvement of the periodic table from Lothar Mayor, Dimitri Vanovich made the leave from the first person, which is Anthony Laurie Laviose, down to the last person, which is Harry Mosley. So please go back and watch that before you start the episode two, which is uh, the modern periodic table. After the whole classification of the periodic table by a lot of scientists, there is need for us to have a concrete periodic table, which is the one we are using today. So the periodic table, we, which is the last periodic table according to Harry, mostly, we state that the physical chemical parts of element vary periodically in order to increase atomic number, then that's to say, the periodic table, if you look at the periodic table so well, you realize that from number 1 down to 118, everything is increasing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that was the periodic table. Then another thing you should take note of is for the modern periodic table, it is classified using two formats. One of them, we have the group slash period. Then the second one, we have blocks. So the periodic table we are using today it's either you are using the one of group and period or you are using the one that is classified using the block. So let's start with the group and period. We already know that we have eight or 18 group in the periodic table. Please take note. There are eight or 18 groups in the periodic table that we have seven period. So how can we identify a group in the periodic table and how do we identify period in the periodic table? Now the horizontal arrangement of elements the horizontal arrangement of element is called period, while the vertical arrangement of element is called group. So hydrogen, lithium, uh, sodium, potassium, they are in the same group. Why lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, they are in the same period. So elements that belong to the same period in the periodic table, they have the same share. They belong to the same share. They belong to the same principal quantum number. But elements that belong to the same uh, period uh, uh, group in the periodic table, they have the same physiochemical property. That's to say, there is a higher tendency, let me use 90% chances, that they will all undergo the same reaction, if not 100%. So for the same uh, group, they have the same physiochemical property. That's to say, they are going to undergo the same reaction. Their reactivity and everything is the same. But for elements that belong to the same period in the periodic table, they have the same energy level which is the same principal quantum number or the same share in the periodic table. Remember, the vertical arrangement is group, while the horizontal arrangement is period. So we have group 1, group 2, group 3, group 4, group 5, group 6, down to group 18 in the periodic table. But for period, we have just seven periods in the periodic table. We have period 1, we have a, a period 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So period 1 has just two elements. That's hydrogen and helium. Period 2 has just 8. Here is 8. Here is 18. Here is 18. Here is 32. And here is 32. So the formula I do say, I do use is 2, 8, 8, 18, 18, 32, 32. So for the period 1, a question might come in this format. The third period in the periodic table has how many elements? Look at the third period. The answer is what? 8. What about the seventh period in the periodic table has how many elements? The answer is what? 32. But the also periodic table, which is the periodic table you have in your textbook, is not 32, it's 17. So if a question should come, period 7 has how many elements? The answer should be 17. But if you are watching the video outside the confinement of Data State University, Abraka, your answer will always be 32. So we do consider period 1 as very short. Period 2 and 3, they are short. Period 4 and 5, they are long. 6 is very long. Then for 7, for those of us who are using 17, period 7, we call it the incomplete period. So, a question might also come in this format. The very short period, well, or which of the following is a short period. Which of the following is a short period? The answer will always be period two and period three. Then for a long period, 
period 4 and period 5 for a very long period is period 6 and for the incomplete is period 7 so we have remember one of the reasons why it's called incomplete because originally it's supposed to be 32 but they have just 17 elements in the period table so as long as you have just 17 elements in the period 7 it is called incomplete period i have uh come again 288 18 18 32 17 for delso so 2 is very short 8 is short 8 is short 18 is long 18 is long 32 is very long the 17 is incomplete so that is everything about the period in the periodic table remember for the group we have 18 group 8 or 18 group why for the period we have seven period so that will take us to the next concept which is the IOPAC periodic table we actually have two kind of periodic table we have the IOPAC periodic table and we have the modern periodic table so these are the two periodic table we have in the textbook the IOPAC and the modern so what is the difference between IOPAC periodic table and the modern periodic table but the question might come in this format oxygen belong to dash group in the modern periodic table so if oxygen is it we believe that oxygen is already in group six so is it group six is it group six a is it group six b or it is group six c so if this higher back priority table, are we going to consider it as group six a or we are going to consider it as group six b so this is exactly what i'm going to introduce next so for the priority table we all agree that we have 18 groups so let me write one yes two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen here is eighteen so you put your hydrogen here you go to the last group here will be your helium then you come back to this place as long as you are working with the standard periodic table as you mean i'm just working with a group one to group eight before here that's on the standard periodic table so as long as you are working with the standard periodic table hydrogen will be here then you go to the last group there, you put helium. Then you write lithium, you write beryllium here. Then you come to, remember here is one, two. Go to group 13, lithium, beryllium. So here you write your what? Your boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. Here will be a neon. You come back here again. Sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine. Here will be your argon. Then potassium, calcium, scadium, titanium, five is now vanadium, chromium, magnesium, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. We have gallium, germanium, arsenic, selenium, bromine, and krypton. So, so the first thing you have to do is that from iron down to nickel, they belong to the same group in the periodic table in the ion pack or the modern periodic table so iron cobalt nickel they are in the same group in the modern periodic table so here will be one you want to go two here is my three is four here is five my six here is uh seven then group eight group nine and group ten here is eight then when you get to group eight, you come back to one again. Here is one, here is two, here is three, here is four, here is five, here is six, here is seven, then here is the group eight. Now, what you should take note of is that if you are working with the modern periodic table, the normal group we have, which is group one, group two, then beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. They are all A's. Why for the transition element, remember, from here down to this place, we refer to them as transition elements. So for the modern periodic table, these are A, A. Why the transition element? You number them as B. But for the IOPAC periodic table, from here down to this place is A. Why from here down to this other side is B? So let me show you something real quick. So here will be one A. In the modern periodic table, please. Here is 2A. Then you come back to this place. Here is 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, and 8A. That is for the modern periodic table. Then you now start here. 1B, 2B, 3B, 
4B, 5B, 6B, and 7, 7B and 8B. So the difference between the IOPAC periodic table and the modern periodic table is that in the modern periodic table, the group 1, group 2, the group 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, all of them, they are in A. That is the first 20 elements we know. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, that is calcium. All of them are in group A. Why for the D block, which is scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, magnesium, cobalt, nickel, down to zinc, they are in B. But for the IOPAC, let's try the IOPAC periodic table. So here we have A, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then now come again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if you look at this so well, you realize that the A, they are 8, and the B as well, they are 8. And if you also count this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. A, they are 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The B as well, they are 8. So the difference is that the group 1, group 2, group 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, they are A's, which is the normal period table we have. All of them are in, they are A. Why for the IOPAC period, uh, uh, why for the transition element from group 3 down to group 12, they are B's. But for the IOPAC periodic table, you are going to number them from group 1 to group 8 is A. Why from group 9 to group 18? Uh, sorry, why from group 11 to group 18 is B. So the periodic table is actually divided into two for the IOPAC. A one side, B the other side. But for the modern, our first 20 element is usually A. Why for the transition element is B. So look at the way the question will come in. Oxygen is in group dash in the modern periodic table. Remember, modern periodic table, oxygen. So let's look at oxygen. If you trace oxygen up, you know that oxygen is group 6A. And if you trace it down, you know that oxygen is group 6B. So the question is, are we talking about the modern or the IOPAC? So as long as you are dealing with the modern periodic table to be 6A, as if we are talking about IOPAC, it will not be what? Be 6B. So that's how it works. What about uh, if you are talking about phosphorus, 5A? In the modern periodic table, please. If you are talking about cobalt, uh, 8B. If you are talking about uh, chromium, 5B. But if you are dealing with the IOPAC periodic table, chromium will not be what? Uh, 5A instead of 5B for the IOPAC. So the difference between them is these 1, 2, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, all of them, they are A's in the modern. But for the IOPAC, from number one down to number eight is A, while from the second uh, one to number eight is B. So this is the major difference between the modern periodic table and the IOPAC periodic table. Then there's a shortcut for you to know this. If they ask you any question at all, any question at all that involves uh, the first 20 element, which is the common one we know, and they ask you, aluminum is the word group in the periodic table. Aluminum, as long as it is modern, it should always be A. Your answer will always be A. Sulfur is in what group in the periodic table? Your answer will always be A. Argon is in what group in the periodic table? Your answer will always be A. As long as it is part of the first 20 element, and as long as you are dealing with uh, uh, the modern periodic table. But if they ask is in what group in the IOPAC periodic table, then your answer will not be B. Then let's go to the next classification of the periodic table, which is block classification. We already know that we have four blocks in the periodic table, which is the S, we have the P, we have the D, and we have the F, S block. The S and the P block in the periodic table, they are referred to as the representative element. We call them the representative element or the representative block. And how do you identify the S block? The group 1, group 2, the group 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, they are the representative element. But the group 1 and group 2 only is the S block. Why from the group 13 to group 18 in the priority table is the P block? So all these elements you are seeing here, they are P block elements because they partially or they completely fill the P orbital. While all the elements you are seeing here, they are the S elements because they partially or they completely fill the S orbital. Why in between the S block and the P block, there's another block there which is called the transition element. This is called uh, the D block element. 
So the D block, they transit between the S block in the periodic table and the P block in the periodic table. So that's one of the reasons they call, they call them the transition element. So for scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, ion, cobalt, nickel, down T, from here downward, it is called the D block. And uh, the partially filled, the penultimate D orbiter, I mean, uh, this D orbiter, the partially filled, the penultimate D orbiter, most cases, they don't consider zinc, cadmium, and mercury. They are found in the D block in the periodic table, but are not classified as D block elements because they completely fill, they completely fill the penultimate D orbiter. And we already agreed that for you to consider as a, an element as a D block element, they will partially fill the the penultimate D orbiter, not completely fill. So this is one of the reasons why zinc, cadmium, and mercury. They are D block elements, but are not considered as D. They sorry, they are found in the D block. But are not considered as a uh, as D block element. Now, under the F block, F block is divided into two. We have uh, the latter nine and then the anti nine, which is the rare earth element and the artificial element. So remember, our periodic table generally, if you look at the whole periodic table, it looks like this. Then we have something like this again. This is how your periodic table looks like. So this is the S block. This is the P block, this is the D block, and this is the F block of the periodic table. Remember, the S and the P block, they are called the representative elements. D block is called the transition element, while the F block is called the inner transition element. And this F block is found in period 6 and period 7 in the periodic table. I would love to end here, but please remember, Period 1, period 2, period 3, down to period 7. I said there has two elements, 8, 8, 18, 18, 32, 32, or 32, and 17. So my question is, which period in the periodic table is incomplete or has an incomplete element? So if you know the answer, please feel free to drop that in the comment section. See you in our next episode. Don't forget to subscribe, like video, and drop a comment. God bless. Oh, I see the